Hello YouTube, Andrew here for another AB Helicopters video. In this video, we're going to explore what limits the maximum speed of a helicopter and why they can't outrun aircraft. Now, helicopters are marvels of engineering, defying gravity with their spinning blades and offering par unparalleled maneuverability. But unlike their fixed wing counterparts, conventional helicopters have some fundamental hurdles when it comes to their top speed due to their design. Aircraft can slice through the air at hundreds of miles an hour, However, helicopters are limited to around 250 miles an hour, with most cruising substantially slower than this. In this video, we will explore what the practical and theoretical limitations that prevent helicopters from achieving the same breakneck speeds of aircraft. As we'll see, it's not even a case of sticking a bigger engine on it and it will fly faster. Take the giant Sikorsky S64 Skycrane helicopter with two engines putting out 4,500 shaft horsepower each. It still has a cruise speed of around 90 knots. We'll first have a look at the limitations due to the tip speed and the speed of sound, then look at the dissymmetry of lift, and then finally explore retreating blade tool and control limitations. We'll also have a look at the world helicopter speed record um, set in the 80s, and then the future compound helicopter designs and what the future holds to allow helicopters to push through the challenges and achieve ever faster speeds. <laughs> The physics of rotorcraft. The key to understanding the limitation lies in the fundamental principle of helicopter flight, rotor blade aerodynamics. Helicopter blades generate lift by rotating through the air, creating areas of high and low pressure. The difference in the pressure above and below the blade produces the lift, allowing the helicopter to counter out gravity and stay airborne. However, this lift comes at a cost. As the blades rotate, the airspeed at the blade tips are much greater than at the root, and this is where the first major limitation comes into play. Tip speed limits. There's a critical point at which the blade tip speed approaches the speed of sound. At this point, the airflow around the blade becomes supersonic, creating shockwaves that dramatically reduce the lift and increase the drag. This phenomenon, known as the transonic flow area, makes it incredibly difficult for helicopter blades to achieve the high speeds necessary for going supersonic. Pushing beyond this limit can lead to catastrophic consequences such as blade flutter or structural failure. A tip speed ratio of 0.5 is usually the maximum ratio of the forward speed to the tip speed. The speed of sound is related to the air temperature. As the air temperature decreases, the speed of sound decreases. So, as you increase in altitude, the air gets colder and the speed of sound gets lower. This is one reason that as the altitude of a helicopter increases, the maximum speed decreases. Designers can mitigate the high drag situation in the transonic region by slowing the main rotor rotation down at higher cruising speeds. However, the VNE, the maximum speed, does vary substantially with the air temperature, pressure, and the gross weight of the helicopter. Balancing lift and drag. Another limiting factor is the delicate balance between lift and drag. The lift generated by the rotor blade is proportional to the forward speed of the helicopter and the rotational speed of the blade. As the helicopter forward speed increases, the advancing blade, the one that's moving in the direction of flight, experiences increased airflow, generating more lift. However, the retreating blade, the one moving against the direction of flight, encounters reduced airflow, resulting in decreased lift. To counter this imbalance, the retreating blade has to now operate at a much higher angle of attack to generate the same amount of lift as the advancing blade. This comes at the cost of a much higher drag value. This additional drag, plus that of the increased drag from the rest of the aircraft, must be overcome with increased engine power. The engine power required to overcome the drag becomes increasingly disproportionate to the gains in forward speed, making high-speed flight inefficient and impractical. High speeds also introduce significant challenges to helicopter stability and control. Retreating blade stall, where the retreating blade loses lift due to operating above the critical angle of attack, becomes more pronounced at higher speeds. This can lead to increased rotor vibrations, loss of control, and increased torsional loads on the rotor system. Additionally, high-speed maneuvers can place increased stress on the helicopter airframe and rotor system, increasing the risk of structural failure. Even the pressure on the forward windshield has a limiting factor on the maximum speed. <laughs> Despite all the limitations discussed so far, engineers are constantly pushing the boundaries of helicopter technology. Advancements in blade design, 
materials and control systems have led to incremental improvements in the helicopter speed, efficiency, performance and, very importantly, noise reduction, which is a major issue, especially when operating in an urban environment. Composite materials like carbon fibre offer increased strength and lighter weight, allowing for higher blade speeds without compromising structural integrity and more advanced multi-profile shaped rotors, such as that found on the new Airbus H160 helicopter, which has an overall five decibel reduction in noise from previous generation helicopters. Having swept rotor tips helps delay the onset of compressibility and the curved blue edge main rotor tips found on the 160, which provide a 50% reduction in exterior sound levels, is coupled to an automatic variable rotor speed control system, which reduces the rotor RPM during various stages of the flight. That said, the helicopter maximum speed record set by a conventional helicopter hasn't changed since the mid-1980s. <laughs> The World Helicopter Speed Record In August 1986, the Westland Lynx set a new world speed record. It flew on a 15km course for an average speed of 216 knots. The helicopter was extensively modified, and it was a version of the Lynx that first flew in 1971. Modifications included upgraded Rolls-Royce gem engines, both putting out over 1,800 horsepower each, which is more than the transmission could cope. 700 horsepower was spare, so modified exhaust was created, which reduced the exit duct to about 40% smaller than normal, thereby creating around 600 pounds of jet propulsion to increase the forward speed of the helicopter. The airframe itself was cleaned to reduce drag, using methods such as removing antennas, aerials, and taping up gaps between panels, which resulted in the parasite drag reducing by almost half. Another major change was the modification to the outer 15% of the rotor blade span where transonic tip speeds can cause issues that limit the maximum speed. Using an experimental rotor tip known as the burp, a specially optimised blade was used which incorporated a double sweep at the tip and a new airfoil profile and a thinner thickness to cord ratio. The result was at high speed, the advancing edge of the rotor tip was going over 97.7% of the speed of sound, about as fast as the theoretical limit of a helicopter. The notch on the forward to rear swept section of the burp blade creates a vortex, similar to the leading edge on an FA-18 Hornet, or that of a Concorde, which means that airflow can remain attached at high angles of attack, crucial for ensuring that the retreating side of the rotor disc is still generating lift. While it's highly unlikely that helicopters will ever match the supersonic speeds of aircraft, ongoing research and development efforts are changing the concept of conventional rotorcraft Compound helicopters, which can combine traditional helicopter rotors with other propulsive or left-generating devices, such as wings, offer the potential for improved speed and efficiency. Tilt rotor aircraft, which can tilt their rotors to function as helicopter blades during takeoff and landing, and as aircraft propellers during forward flight, have been in use with the US military since 2007 in the form of the V-22 Osprey, which actually had its first flight in 1987, but it took years of further development to perfect this design. The engine nacelles and prop rotors can be transitioned from the vertical to the horizontal, allowing the helicopter to behave like a turboprop aircraft in forward flight, permitting a maximum forward speed of 275 knots and a very impressive range of over 800 nautical miles. This promising technology underpins the AW609 commercial tilt rotor aircraft, which is set to be certified later this year. This aircraft is likely to see use in offshore oil rig transport, but it has the possibility of being useful in the corporate transport and long-range search and rescue operations. Other recent attempts at compound helicopters include the Bell V280 Valor and the Boeing Sikorsky SB-1, as well as the Airbus X3 technology demonstrator first flown in 2010 with a cruise speed of 220 knots, and the upcoming Airbus Racer, which is designed to cruise about 215 knots. In conclusion, the limitations to high-speed helicopter flight are deeply rooted in the fundamental physics of rotorcraft. Tip speed limitations, the balance between lift and drag, stability and control challenges all play a role in keeping the helicopter speed firmly below that of modern aircraft. However, with continuous advancements in technology and design, the future of rotorcraft looks rather exciting. New concepts such as the compound helicopter, tilt rotors and others provide the potential for pushing the boundaries of speed and performance whilst expanding the capabilities of these versatile flying machines. 
The unique blend of maneuverability and the hover capability will continue to make helicopters or rotorcraft an invaluable asset for various years to come. Hopefully you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching and until next time, see you.